الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فيا عباد الله أوصيكم بتقوى الله وطاعته إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاؤكم فقد كذبتم فسوف يكون لزاما وقال الله تعالى يا أيها الناس أنتم الفقراء إلى الله والله هو الغني الحميد صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ليس شيء أكرم على الله تعالى من الدعاء وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدعاء مخ العبادة صدق رسول الله ونطق حبيب الله Indeed, all praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى May Allah's blessings, mercy and peace be upon us we thank Allah, we believe in Him, we rely upon Him alone. We ask for His help, we seek refuge in Him from the evils of our actions. Dear respected brothers and sisters, everything in the universe, living or non-living, glorifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at every moment. In fact, there is a turning towards the Supreme Creator in the nature of all creatures. The creatures, but jinns and human beings, glorify and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without their will and unquestioningly. Angels are on the absolute obedience to Allah. The sun, the moon, the seas, the mountains, all of them submit to their Lord. But the human being is not like that. The human being must show will, desire, turning and determination in praise, gratitude, and invocation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though human beings have a natural tendency to know their creator, they, as responsible, will and rational being, undergoes a contemplation and reflection process in comprehending truth. In the Quran, it is stated that people who open their hearts to the truth, who have deep understanding and who have a clean mind and heart, comprehend and express the power of Allah in the best way. Inna fi khalqis samawati wal ardi wa akhtila fi layli wal nahar la ayatil li ulil albab. Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, 
and the alternation of the day and the night. There are signs for people of wisdom. And they say, Rabbana ma khalabta hadha baadila subhanaka faqina adhab al-nar. Our Lord, you have not created all this in vain, in vain. Glory be to you. Protect us from the torment of the fire. In other words, the human being can surrender to his Lord by his own will and submit to him. But he can also show ungratefulness by his own will again and live as if he doesn't have a Lord or owner. The supreme being that we believe in, Rabbul Alameen, is one, incomparable, almighty, and transcendent. Everything needs him, but he doesn't need anything. He is the owner of everything. Does the transcendence and absolute power of Allah prevent him from establishing a special bond with his creation? Of course not. Or is the relationship between the Lord of the world, worlds and his subjects a professional and formal relationship? Of course not. Quran teaches us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator who gives his servants the opportunity to communicate with him directly. He is close to his servants. Our Lord informs this in many verses. We are closer to him than his jackal vein. He fulfills all the needs of his servants. He is more merciful to human beings than themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٍ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانِي When my servants ask you, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, about me, I, I am truly near. I respond to those who call me. أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stands between a person and their heart. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ He is with you wherever you are. Our Lord's relationship with all his creatures is continuous. He is not an idol God, but a Lord who creates, rules and dominates. He continues to create every moment. He is not ignorant of what he has created even for a moment. He says, وَمَا كُنَّا عَنِ الْخَلْقِ غَافِلِينَ We are never unmindful of our creation. كُلَّ يَوْمٍ هُوَ فِي شَأْنٍ He is in a state of action. He touches our lives every moment. That's why he has sent prophets and divine messages to humanity throughout history. A right-minded conscience always feels the existence and power of the Creator. The Quran states, فَأَيْنَمَا تُوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ Wherever you turn, you are facing towards Allah. In short, our Lord takes care of us all the time. No matter what the circumstances, every person has the opportunity to talk and connect with his Lord. It is our Creator who gives this opportunity, grace and trust. The following verse is very clear. Call upon me. I will respond to you. But the important question is, how often do we call upon him? How close are we to our creator? Or 
how are we of such a blessing? Undoubtedly, the closest communication with our Lord is through worship. As our beloved Prophet والسلام, stated, the nearest a servant comes to his Lord is when he is prost prostrating himself. <coughs> Prostration reminds us of our helplessness. The great scholar and professor at Tabari understood the command, call upon me as worship me, pray only to me, not to anyone else, so that I can accept your prayer and forgive you. Worship in itself is a dua and a turning towards to Allah. <coughs> However, the relationship between Allah and the, and the servant should not be limited to a certain period of time or the case of travel, but should be our main agenda throughout our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects us to turn to him in all circumstances. The closeness of the servant to Allah is shaped by the steps a person takes to become a servant with whom Allah is pleased. The determination in our faith, the sincerity in our deeds are the main means that bring us closer to our Lord. In fact, any behavior that directs a person to Allah and aims to his consent is a supplication. As the great scholar and muhaddis Sufyan as Savri pointed out, even staying away from sins is a kind of supplication. The term Ahsanu Taqweem, the best form that our Lord uses for human beings, is actually, actually related to our pure and uncorrupted nature. According to the verse 172 of Surah Al-A'raf, human being recognized Allah as supreme being, supreme Lord before he was created. But it is also human being himself who forgets this and distances himself from Allah. When we take the turning and supplication of the Prophet Adam and his wife to Allah right after their mistake as a principle, the nobility of the human begins to manifest upon us. A person who believes that he is in need of his Lord and he is most forgiving and most loving can establish a strong and warm bond with his Lord. Supplication is a turning, calling and invocation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A believer knows that he belongs to Allah and will eventually return to him. It is unthinkable for a person who wholeheartedly believes in this to ignore the invitation of Allah to dua his overflowing love and interest, and to imagine his Lord far away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mujib. He is the one who accepts our du'as. It is a Lord who is always ready to answer his servants and wishes to show us with mercy and blessings. Our Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam says, Whoever wants to meet Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to meet him. Allah doesn't leave those who want to achieve this consent alone and without help. The answer given to believers who say, Mata Nasrullah, when will the help of Allah come? Is Ala inna Nasrullahi Qareeb, Allah's help is near. The one who ever remember Allah, Allah also remembers him. A believer calls to his Lord, presents his condition to him, takes refuge in him and asks him for his help. He finds peace and tranquility 
by talking to his Lord during supplication. In many verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to be friends with him. Allahu waliyu alladhina amanu yukhrijuhum min al-dhulmati ila al-nur. Allah is the ally of those who believe. He brings them out of darkness into the light. He wants us to accept him the sole friend and the sole protector. His greatness and transcendence don't require us to distance ourselves for, from him, to ignore and neglect him. On the contrary, a person who can talk to his Lord and share his pain with him is a candidate to be his ally. In this context, the relationship between Allah and the servant should not be purely formal and ritualistic. It is essentially a relationship based on love, emotion and sincerity. It is a friendly, intimate and informal relationship. Therefore, a believer should feel that Allah Azza wa Jalla is close to him. Let us remember Sayyida Maryam, the symbol of chastity and piety. She has overwhelmed and saddened by the labor pain on the one hand, and the negative thoughts of her people on the other hand, and said, I wish I had died before this, and was a thing long forgotten. She was feeling her Lord so close to her that she almost reproached to her Lord. But that was essentially an helpless plea and supplication. As a matter of fact, her Lord immediately answered and told her what to do. Honorable Muslims, we see many du'as of the prophets in the Qur'an. It is an, an exemplary for us that even though they are the chosen servants of Allah, they have never stopped praying to their Lord and invoking Him in both distress and relief. They have overcome, overcome all kinds of difficulties only by praying and supplicating to Allah. They know that the support and help of their Lord was with them. The Prophet Hud took refuge in his Lord by saying, Inna Rabbi qareebun mujib. Indeed, my Lord is near, all responsive to prayers. And the Prophet Ibrahim by saying, Inna Rabbi la sami'u dua Indeed, my Lord is the one who listens to the prayer. Muslim leaves his or herself to the mercy of Allah with supplication and feels safe. It is important for the person to believe wholeheartedly that his dua will be accepted. The determination and submission in dua are necessary. Our Prophet والسلام, advised us that Call upon Allah with certainty that he will answer you. Know that Allah will not answer the supplication of a heart that is unmindful and distracted. Let us not forget that there is no obstacle in front of us to talk and meet with our Lord. It is enough for us to open our hands and call to him for all our worldly or otherworldly wishes. It doesn't befit a Muslim to think that his supplication will not be answered. Sooner or later, our dua will definitely be answered by our Lord. Our duty is to trust in Allah and surrender him. The important thing, as a believer said in the struggle for, the, for truth against Pharaoh, Fir'aun, 
is to be able to say وَأُفَوِّضُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ I commit my case to Allah. The servant is exalted in, in the sight of Allah with supplication and invocation. Allah Azza wa Jalla commands our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam to warn unbelievers as follows. مَا يَعْبَأُ بِكُمْ رَبِّي لَوْ لَا دُعَاءُكُمْ my Lord will never care about you if you will not invoke him. It is our servitude and supplication that makes us truly human beings and servants and makes us valuable in the sight of Allah. Dear brothers and sisters, let us not be deprived of the blessing, peace and the trust that come with supplication and invocation to our Lord. Let us be close friends with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us avoid offending Him. I would like to conclude the khutbah with the following dua that our beloved Prophet of, often recited. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanah wa fi al-akhirati hasanah wa qina azab al-nar. Our Lord, Grant us good in this world and in the hereafter and protect us from the torment of the fire. Amen. Ala inna ahsan al-kalam wa ablagha al-nizam Kalam Allah al-Malik al-Aziz al-Allam Kama qala Allah tabarak wa ta'ala fi al-kalam Wa iza qurya al-Qur'an fastami'u lah وَأَنْصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ الحمد لله حمد الكاملين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين تعظيماً لنبيه وتكريماً لفخامة شان شرف صفيه فقال عز وجل من قائل مخبراً وآمراً إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ارض عن الأربعة الخلفاء الراشدين سيدنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى بقية الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المسلمين اللهم أيد كلمة الحق والدين اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين اللهم ثبت أقدامنا على الصراط المستقيم اللهم أحسن عاقبتنا في الأمور كلها وأجرنا من خزي الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة اللهم أحينا حياة طيبة بالصحة والسلامة والعافية في الدين والدنيا والآخرة اللهم نوّل قلوبنا بأنوار محبتك وذكرك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم ارحم أمة محمد رحمة عامة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون أقم الصلاة